Bridges. He's on the precipice of taking that next step. He's been willing to put in the work every day of his career, and he's an everyday guy. And he commits himself to getting better. He identifies where he wants to improve on. And, you know, you just watch over time, you can see such a natural progression. I just i am glad that the authenticity, of, like, he's still the same. Even for me seeing him back from when he played basketball in school to Villanova and then now to the NBA, like he's just a really good person and that makes me really proud. He got an opportunity and took full advantage. The cut, the finish and the foul, Michelle Bridges. He really has elevated to another level. Extremely competitive. Where did that start? Um, I know I've always been very competitive. I had goals sometimes that were very hard goals, but it was something that I knew it was attainable if I worked really hard. Grew up in West Philly, and that was during the time of like there was a huge truck epidemic going on in the area, and it was it was a rough part of town and. You know, I just always wanted to live a different life and not be like subject to my circumstances. But it just really sparked this competitiveness in me and I've always been that way. I was the first one in my family to go to college and I really wanted to be different and wanted people to look up to me. And when I found out I was pregnant, I just felt like I let everyone down and it was like one of the hardest times in my life because I had a lot of people doubt me and didn't think that, you know, I would be any different from what they seen around. I'm like a young teenage mom and didn't make it, you know, and that was that was hard for me. But I really used that just as my fuel to know that, again, I can do hard things. I'm capable of that and I can be successful. My son can be successful. But, you know, I tell Mikkel, like even when he has hard days, you know how the NBA is. It's just you're never going to have a great game every night. And I say, you know, you're capable of doing hard things, Mikkel. Like, you're going to have bad days. But it's the setbacks in life that really propels us for our best comeback. And that's something that I always use and something that I believe in for sure. I went to tennis camp when I was young. I used to play with my mom all the time when I was like 11 I mean, she used to whoop my ass every single time. Yeah. Like, I'm getting in a car, not even, like, looking at this. Like, who is this woman? Yeah, like, exactly. no way she did me like this. Exactly. I'm looking out the window, like, don't talk to me. Yeah. Pissed off. Like, <laughs> like, like don't talk yeah. to me. Like, pissed off. Just looking out the window, like, can't wait to get home, so I go right in my room. Yeah. My mom used to get on me because she said, you have to let him win at some stuff. 
I was like, nah, nah, bro, no. I would just, I would, I would literally beat him and I would never let him win. And my mom's like, that's not normal, Tania. Like most parents let their kids win. I'm like, no, he has to earn the win. And eventually as I got older, more athletic, got a little lankier, got faster, I just started dominating. Once Mikel probably was like 13, I couldn't beat him at anything. He had a true gift of athleticism. He could play anything. Maybe Scrabble, I could beat him at that. Even though he thinks that I make up words, but I'm pretty sure I'm good at that. He was in high school and we were on the courts and I thought that I can like, I could take him. Because I, he was talking a lot of trash and I was like, come on, you're, you're a suburban kid, Mikel. Like I'm from the city. <laughs> And he went up and he like dunked on me and I fell backwards on the ground. And he says something around like, um, leave the baby off the streets, get the baby off the streets or something like that. I was mad. I'm getting older, she's getting older. So it's just like, you know, sometimes you get older, the opposite way you start coming down, but I'm just starting to grow. I'm starting to just be even more physical, more athletic. And I used to go crazy every time. I was like, I'm not losing. Like, I'm just not. And that's, I guess, where I get my competitor from. Look, it's no doubt that being a young single mom brings about its own unique challenges. But, you know, one thing that was important for me is that you lead with love. You remember how important it is to be kind and really be transparent and lead with authenticity. Like, those are just some of the things that are important to me, but those are the things that I wanted to instill within Mikkel. Single mom. It's not easy. I can't even imagine what that's like. But knowing that she was always, she had his back and that bond was very special and that that was part of who Mikkel is, was, and is still to this day. My mom just raised me right, just to be a better person. I think that's how it goes and I don't know, be a hard worker. I think me being a hard worker, I think it just comes in the genes of seeing her and watching what she does. It was just like natural, just watching how much she works. I had like a thousand things to do as like a serial multitasker. And I think Mikel could see that. Like he could see like I would kiss him goodnight and then I'll be like pulling out my books at 10 o'clock at night, doing my homework up to like two o'clock, get him up, make breakfast, get him to school, go to work, come home and do that routine all over again. So I always wanted to push myself to be able to give Mikkel a better life that I have. I said, okay, like, what will be the best ideal circumstance for both me and Mikkel? Well, I was working at Vanguard at the time, and Vanguard's in Malvern. And I said, all right, this is great. I'm going to move to Malvern. You have to understand, like, there wasn't a lot of people like me, that it wasn't a lot of people of color, and there certainly weren't any single parent family. So, you know, I always felt like, almost like I wasn't good enough, you know, because I wanted Mikkel to have the absolute best. Socioeconomically, you're going to see kids that have things that maybe kids would not have in the city. It's going to be a more Caucasian, less diverse community. And coming into that, knowing what Mikkel is too, so loved by the community and so loved by his classmates from the moment he stepped foot on campus all the way through. I had to just learn a little quicker than usual and living in Philly until then, like all my friends were black and all that, never had no white friends until I came up. But she knew, I mean, she knew and she never lived in suburbs either. So she knew how it was gonna be different and prepared me for it. I said like, people may look down and people may have things to say, but you have to know that everyone's circumstances are different, but this doesn't define who you are. And not only that, like, you are going to be great. Like I was always would tell him that, like no matter what you do, you're going to be great. Even when he was playing basketball, I said, Mikhail, you're going to be an NBA player. He would laugh. Like, he didn't believe me. I think he just was so young, but I, I was legit saying that when he was maybe like in third grade. You could do whatever you put your mind to. Like you could do great things. Like you call it, you believe it, and you will achieve it. Like it's, it sounds simplistic in nature, but you got to have big lofty goals you just do in life. In the city, the opportunities for basketball may be more there to play and be around it. Here, sometimes not as much. Got to find it a little bit more. 
I think their goals were stability, but also someone who's going to promote and give him an opportunity to really show what he can do. Here's a solid program that a coach is going to spend time or a staff is going to spend time, lots of time. We'd be in here all year round working to make the program better and make the kids better. So Mikhail came out in seventh grade and, uh, you know, I recognize that he has some athleticism, but the reality is, athletically, he was not our best player on the team and was not a starter. Um, so I think that is what has helped him to continue to improve because he never had that, I don't think he ever had that stigma, like, I'm the big fish in the little pond. So he always worked to be better. The first time I saw him walk in my office, it was the big smile. You see the height, you see the length, you see the way he carries himself. In that first meeting, you feel like, okay, okay, this young man may have some potential. We don't know yet. I mean, this is the first meeting, but you see what he's bringing with his character. This is a potential. We'll see how this goes. He was the big reason why I never played another sport in high school because he always had leagues going on. We had fall league, we had summer league, we had spring league. We always have open gyms. So it was just like you really couldn't play another sport. So our open gyms were interesting in that the kids wouldn't just come and play like we played with them. And we were just as competitive, if not more competitive than the kids at times, especially on like a random Tuesday, Thursday when they're tired from school. There was one particular game I remember where I sort of whispered to him like, hey, you know, this is game point. You're gonna take the shot. He took the shot um, and their, their team won. And so that was kind of like my first impression of like, all right, there might be something here. But once we got into the summer, that's when he got the experience of what it's really like to be in a program that's program oriented. You're gonna play hard, you're gonna defend, you're gonna learn to defend, you're gonna share the ball, you're gonna do all these things. And I say, like everybody else, he didn't wanna play defense. <laughs> he didn't wanna play defense like all the other kids that ever came into the program. Sometimes he didn't want to pressure the basketball, or sometimes when his man passed the basketball, eh, it's time to relax. And we, as coaches, you see the length, you see the ability to move, you see the height, and you know that if he's able to get these concepts, the sky is the limit to be a great athlete. On ball defender, rebounder, box out, rotate. Listen, I'll tell you, it's not fun, but it's rewarding in the end. When you turn around and we look at the banner and you look at what's up there, defense is really where that comes from. Mikkel's mom was just the sun, the centerpiece, the cornerstone. You always knew that, you always got that vibe from her and she was always open to having conversations and her and coach Nolan talked all the time. If you ask Jim Nolan, he would say, we had some fights. <laughs> like, put my son back in the game, you know? But look, I think you gotta trust a coach. It was very evident that Mikel was the best player on the team, but Jim Nolan would never let you know that. Like, Mikel was no different from anyone else. He never treated Mikel special or made him feel like you're the star of the team. Knowing that this is Great Valley and not like a juggernaut powerhouse high school program, we just focused on the purity of the game. We were really pure and uncompromising about how to play the game of basketball the way we thought it was supposed to be played. And it was well suited for Mikel in the sense that as good as Mikel was, we would not let him take a lower quality shot if one of his teammates was open for a higher quality shot. Cutting, pass and cutting, that was our offense PC, pass and cut. And I was always playing off ball and easy points and playing the right way and that's what it was. It was just cutting and it's funny because that's like a lost thing because everybody has a ball in their hand. So like you go to college and I'm back cutting people. It's like this whole thing. People are like, whoa, like he's cutting like da 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 because people are not used to it. I'm just like, I, I, I wish I could do what everybody, I wish I could come up ball screens, do all these moves, but people appreciate it and I just, I always had that, and then as I just kept developing my game, it's always just like a thing that I always learned that a lot of kids don't learn. We were never going to allow the players to be satisfied with where they were. And so even though Mikel's talent and potential and upside was here, and someone else's may have not been as promising, 
we were going to, in a sense, nitpick Mikel. We focused a lot on the little things of the game that anyone, no matter what talent or what caliber, could do. And if Mikel was this good, he could still do these intangibles, these things that didn't show up on the stats. So we would break down a lot of film, and if there was a play where, you know, Mikel got beat, someone drove by him, Mikel could very easily catch up and pin the ball right up against the backboard. And while the whole crowd would go crazy and pat him on the back at school the next day, we in the film room would say, why did that kid even get by you in the first place? He was a great teammate. Loved his teammates, teammates loved him. What he showed, his character always radiated and you just wanted to be around him. And he always did give a great effort and he was always so coachable. And he always did everything that we could ask him to do. For Mikel, like, he just wanted to win. No matter what was asked of him, he wanted to do it because he wanted to win. He was never someone like, oh, I want to go out and score 30 points tonight. It was, what does the coach need me to do to win? And then I respected that, you know, because he was like that young. I would say, like, I want you to score X amount of points, you know? And he would say, Mom, like, we just need to win. Like, sometimes it's not about me scoring points. I may be needed to do something else, so. Definitely respect the kid for that. After that junior year, he did play AAU, but he played AAU with some of his teammates at a less competitive level AAU. I knew, we knew, he needed to go to the highest level AAU that could possibly he could go to. Knowing where he was and knowing the potential, you had to do it. He had to go through it. And I know, even at that time, I'm sure that were they thinking that Mikel's an NBA player? Uh, who knows? Even there at that point, I'm not sure maybe much at that point. The Nike EYBL is just the elite of the elite. I mean, there are Division I players who don't start on those teams who will go play in the Big Ten, the Big East. That's how good the talent is. He was still a question mark. He was like a potential guy. Everybody's kind of looking at him like, this long, lanky kid, there's something there. And a lot of the big schools liked his length and everybody's like trying to figure him out. And you can legitimately see, all right, Mikhail Bridges is playing against a future first round draft choice. Let's see how he matches up. Man, ridiculous. Especially as a kid that's never seen anything like it. Just all these schools, Duke, UNC, like Nova, Michigan State, you're just like, just crazy, man. It's like nerve wracking, especially my first experience. You could see the first time he played at that level, that he was kind of gaining confidence every time he was on the floor. He was figuring out his own game at that time. Each game, like, just nervous, you know, trying to play the right way. I'll start here, first game. And the second game, I get like this. And the third game, I get like this. In the fourth game. And by the fourth game, like, I'm comfortable now. Like, I've been in it, and I now understand the speed, the talent. And what was amazing to us was he fit in so seamlessly because he did all of the little things because he didn't need to be the go-to guy. But any time he had to make a play, he was the most efficient guy out there. Mikel was playing Peach Jam, and Larry Brown was in the gym. I was standing off to the side, and he said, Bridges, you related to Bridges? And I was like, no, I'm Mikel's mom. He looked, he's like, okay. He's like, that kid's gonna be an NBA player one day. And I like jumped up, I gave him a hug, I was like, Thank you so much, I've been saying this for so long, no one believes me. Went back and told Mikel, he just laughed at me like, okay, mom. My coach put me in a good position just to play how I play and just, just line up, shoot, cut, get breakaway dunks, you know, play some defense, get some blocks. So just keeping it simple and I guess, you know, Nova saw it and just, you know, you know, like me. I just remember right after team final, like, Letter after letter after letter, I was like, oh my gosh, this is different. And, you know, it felt good. Later in that summer, his AU coach said, you better get on him because everybody else, like Texas, Georgetown, Florida, everybody's offered him and you guys are kind of still evaluating. And then we really started looking into his background and that he grew up right around Villanova and his mom was getting her MBA in Villanova. So we were like, this, this is a no brainer. I wanted to find out what was important to the coaches. The things that Jay believed, like 
just the core of who he was and what he wanted to bring about in his student athletes. He wanted Mikel to be a good man. He wanted him to be a great student. He cared holistically about the athlete. Meeting Tania and his dad and his high school coach and then getting to know Mikel, everything else fits so perfectly. You know, he, he wanted to come in and get better. He wanted to be coached. He wanted to learn. Tell me what I need to do. Coach me up. I want to be a great student. I was really just trying to pick the best school for me and Nova was that and I wasn't looking at nobody else. Once I Nova was close to home, easy for my mom and them to go to games. Great education. I remember my grandma was, that's the biggest thing she was on, just you know how great a school Villanova was. Once Villanova was in a play, we had a team dinner, like coach and a few other assistant coaches came by the house. I cooked lasagna and I got him a nice bottle of wine and he kind of was like very relaxed. But after that, when they left, he's like, I'm going to build up. I was like, I know. Like he, he knew that that was a choice that he was going to make for sure. I said to Tania after he committed, one thing I'll never forget, when he said to us, I'm coming in the house, she broke down crying. And she said, my job's done. And she sacrificed her life for him. Truly. I knew that all that hard work leading up to that place that I trusted him with Mikel. And that's something that's important. Like I'm like giving up my child to someone else and me just growing up being a single mom, like that was, that was really important to me. And I knew that leaving him with Coach Wright that I can take a deep breath. I could exhale and know that he's gonna take it where I left it off and continue Mikel's journey on the next phase of his life. We really like to recruit physically tough, physically strong guys. So Mikhail was kind of out of our normal recruit and it was because he was so slight. I never forget, Jay was like, he's playing against grown men, like not children, grown ass men. <laughs> and his small frame, he needed to like get into the weight room and bulk up to be able to play against grown men. When we did make the redshirting decision, we all decided like, this guy's gonna be really good. How quickly can we expedite this physical maturation? So the decision was like, look, Mikhail, you can play with these guys, but we gotta use four or five days a week on weightlifting, strength training, and not as much on basketball to get you there quicker. I understood it. It was just tough. You telling a kid that 17 years old playing every year of his life pretty much, that he has to like sit out a year and he's like completely healthy. You know, that's like, that's strange. I never done anything like that. So I'm like, all right, like just kind of put my pride aside, but also knew like I'm not a one and done type of guy. Like this is building and this is for my future. So I needed this year. I mean, that was a, the toughest year of my life, but the best year for me. And mind you, I have my roommate Phil who's playing. Oh, we had the biggest love-hate relationship in the world. Oh, I hated that man with a passion when it came to on that court. At that time, I was playing like 15 minutes a game a little bit, but his schedule was way more worse than mine. When you're not playing, it's tough when you're just working out every day, lifting. We have practice, he still practices, but then he has to like work out after, and he probably had lift before. So he was extremely exhausted. He would come back to the room just kind of just like dead a lot of time. It was way harder for him in terms of being off the court than people realized. Everybody's talking about the game and things like that, and I'm just sitting there like I don't play. And, you know, that's kind of like that embarrassment a little bit, eating me alive, wanting to be out there. And so it was, it was tough on me, especially mentally. But my boy Phil, my best friend to this day, he got me mentally right. Like we just chilled in these little dorms, and we both had TVs like right in front of our beds, and we just play Madden all day. You know, chill, have fun, and that's like one of the biggest things that like kind of really helped me get through my freshman year. It's just. I think he felt what I was going through and just kind of just helped me get through it. Just, you know, and I appreciate him for it. Our practice are pretty physical. We play very hard. So on that team, we had uh, Darren Hilliard, who was like second team All-American. Then we had Josh Hart, who was a sophomore. I think he won sixth man of the year that year in the Big East, so Josh was very good. And that was his matchups every day in practice, so dealing with those two guys had the battle, and I think that made him so much better. Josh Hart would struggle with him, 
he'd block Josh Hart's jump shot like once a practice and be going down the other end and Josh would be chasing him down and we knew what Josh was going to do and he was red shirt he was you know like 165 pounds and we were like no Josh no and he would just annihilate him knock him into the walls thank God we had padding and Mikhail pop up and be right in on the next play. I never sensed that he wavered at all. I sensed him 100% supporting his teammates. I saw him dive in 100% to his development, realizing that maybe he just did need that little bit of extra time and embracing it and taking full advantage of it. What did I say in the huddle? Right, and I said, if you catch a ball on the perimeter, you have plenty of time to drive. There's four seconds. Okay. He flew at you, shot fake drive. You don't want to, with four seconds, throw the ball off the top of the backboard. You want to get good shots. All right, get to the paint. Mikhail, you're jogging. Let's go, Blue, let's go. Get matched up. Wake up. The traits and values that set the Nova program and the Nova players apart? Uh, I think it's the culture. Um, what Coach Wright drills into you playing for each other, playing hard, playing together. I think we all came in with open minds, but when we left, we kind of had that really instilled in us, and we still carry it to this day. Like attitude, that's like the biggest thing. Man, that's what we say after every huddle, after every time we break, like at lunch, and we all bring it in, it's always attitude. How you respond when something doesn't go right, you get back on defense after a turnover, you miss a shot, don't get mad, get back on defense, just kind of respond the right way. Obviously, I don't run around here like I used to in college and run around clapping, yelling attitude, but it's always in the back of my head and how I carry myself. After a full year of lifting, working out, he came in ready to go. I mean, uh, he was waiting for it, and he made an immediate impact on our team. He's coming in as a redshirt freshman. We had a really good team. We had Ryan Ortidiak, who was a senior. Daniel Cheffa was a senior. We had mature guys, you know, Josh Hart, Chris Jenkins. So we were thinking of him as like, this is a sixth man, sixth, seventh man off the bench, our defensive stopper. But he finished every game. Coach Wright loved him that year. He was so disruptive on the, on the defensive end. His length, he was getting a real feel for the game. And he was a big punch for that year for us. I mean, we didn't have a guy like Mikel on that team. And he kind of brought something to the court that we needed, the energy, that length, just that presence out there. His first year, he was an unbelievable defender. And as the year went, he was always out there in key moments, especially towards the end of the games when we needed stops. I remember our game in the final eight against Kansas when the game was online and we needed a stop. He was in the game with a chance to go to the final four, and then he made the steal in the play to ice the game. It's legendary, no, no allure. 4.7 seconds. Time to go length of the court with Archie Diakon. Three seconds at mid-court. Gives it to Jenkins for the championship. The national champions. Nobody had us winning, and I was what 19 years old. Like I was, that was the most fun of my life after we won. Like just being a kid and college kid. Throughout his career, I think he learned how to play literally every role, from a guy that came off the bench to a productive starter. And then his last year, he was one of our stars. So he's literally played every role there is to play uh, in college basketball. You see articles, you see stuff on the internet. My name popped up in some things about the future. And I was like, oh, damn, like, I was just playing defense. They are just like, watch out for him. So I kind of had that mindset in the back of my head, like, oh, my, oh, people think I could be a pro, like in the NBA. I'm like, oh, dope. I was more worried about the NBA's impression of him than I was his ability to play at that level. He's so unselfish, they're gonna appreciate that, you know? The NBA isn't made of players that all score 20 points a game. There's a place for players that have that unselfish defense, move without the ball, finish, just shoot the three and have their isolated roles. The red shirt, the evolution year after year, and his senior year at, at Nova. I had a funny feeling and I think he knew already, the first round was in there somewhere. There was a game at the Garden versus Gonzaga. He had a play where he went down the middle of the floor and had a ridiculous dunk. And then literally the next possession, he sprinted down and got a block. Uh, it was a back-to-back -back possession. And it was just like, whoa, welcome to the show, Mikel Bridges. Mikel Bridges is making a case for first team All-America in this game. Talk about a player that plays at both ends. And after that game, Jay Billis was just like, this kid's like, he's gonna be a top 10 pick. And like from that moment on, 
Like whatever mock draft you ever saw, whatever it was, it was always at 10. Like it was never at past that. It was just strictly off Jay Bill is saying this guy's gonna be top 10. After that game, he was on the radar, and then he had a great senior year, and we won the national championship. So everyone else sees this. He's not just gonna get a chance. He's gonna get drafted high. And once you get drafted high, then, now you got an opportunity. At the draft, it was like very emotional because I remember him just being this small little kid. And I remember the tough times that we had and just all the things that we've experienced over the years. And the fact that this is like coming to fruition is like, this is real. With the 10th pick in the 2018 NBA draft, the Philadelphia 76ers select Mikael Bridges from Villanova University. You say that you get choked up every time you see him running out of the locker room. Now you get to see him run out of the locker room in the arena you work in. Yeah. I mean, what does that mean? How crazy is that? It's surreal. And for those that don't know your story, Mikhail, you were a red shirt, you turned into a sixth man of the year, and then you were a captain of a national championship team. So how has your journey made you the player that you are? It's a lot of work, man. I, I've been through everything. And I mean, I don't know. I just, I just want to thank God for this. I'm just I'm too, too, too happy for this. I was so thrilled for him and his mom. It's probably happier for Tania that he was going to Philadelphia. My son is coming like to play at the team that I work. Like that's a that's a dream come true. Like it's that stuff doesn't happen every day. And then I found out he was being traded. Philadelphia has traded the rights of Mikel Bridges to the Phoenix Suns for Zaire Smith, who's the 16th pick in the draft. So Mikel Bridges, who grew up dreaming of playing for the Sixers, mom works for the Sixers, he'll go to the Suns now. The only thing that was going through my mind, honestly, was, is he okay? And literally, my phone rang, it was him, he's like, I picked up the phone, he's like, Mom, I'm okay. Everything's gonna be okay, Mom. You know, it's like, I, <laughs> like, I'm the one who's supposed to be consoling him. So amazed at how he handled it in front of everybody. He's like, attitude, attitude, coach. You know, that's kind of our, our code word. He goes, I got this. Attitude, what I gotta do? I gotta go out there and prove them wrong. But at the end of the day, all that hard work that Mikel did to put in his game, like it finally paid off. And as a parent, like when your child gets to fulfill their dreams and their aspirations, no matter what it is, you are incredibly proud and it's just a moment that, you know, you'll never forget. It's ingrained in your heart. Crowder comes away with the ball. Nice feed, Bridges, the cut and the finish! Mikel Bridges having the game of his life here in game two of the final. The conversations once in a while that we would talk about with Phoenix was the group that he loved around him and how they cultivated a culture and working out and spending time together. And I think that continued to push and motivate him to where all of a sudden, in those last 10 games in Phoenix, look, I hear I have an opportunity now, and he just takes it and runs with it. There's always rumblings. Like, his name comes up in trade talk all the time, but I don't think it was gonna happen. In a blockbuster trade with the Nets, the Phoenix Suns are acquiring Kevin Durant, Phoenix sending Mikhail Bridges, Cam Johnson, and four first round picks to Brooklyn. I worried the same way because I knew he loved Phoenix, he loved his teammates. You know, I called him like, are, are, you, are you okay? He's like, I'm, I'm good. He goes, I gotta make this work. And I was just like, you know what, he's done this before. People don't understand, like when you get traded, there's no time to be like, oh, I gotta sell my house, I gotta get my, I gotta get my affairs in order. Like it doesn't work like that. Like the next day you're out and you're in that city and you're getting a physical and you're like getting ready to play for that team. You know, I just have an immense amount of respect for the players because it's tough. We kind of knew, I gotta tell you, there's a lot of jokes. When Katie wanted to come here, we knew <laughs> the pieces and who might be the ones that's gonna go. And us two was the the main two. And we joke around, I always said like, at least we got us, at least we got us. And um, at least I got my two in me. That's just, this is how it goes. When we first got to Cal, he wanted to play that night. 
and the, the trade wasn't finalized and I, and I had to explain to him like you know unfortunately this is this is kind of out of our hands you're not gonna be able to play and, and I realized he, he had this quote-unquote Iron Man streak going where he hadn't missed a game since since high school and even in high school it wasn't his fault <laughs> that he missed the game so really refreshing to see a guy like that want to jump in there with his teammates right off the bat be a part of this group and, and set a tone early you know I took the news and at first it was like Whoa, but then quickly it was back to normal and understanding that we have work to do, that we need to get out here and get acclimated with the guys, the team, the area, um, and then just a lot of excitement for this opportunity. It's a great opportunity, 100%. I said, this is part of Mikhail's journey and we're, we're gonna be ready. And I flew with him on the flight and next thing I know, blink my eyes, we're here in Brooklyn and been riding this wave ever since. just grew up here man since high school and college always wanted to buy a house out here so you know when I got traded here they kind of helped because now I'm like in the city so now it's like you have a reason like oh no you're cramped up in the city now I'll go go to the beach just grateful for that because I always wanted to live here and then you know get traded I think it's just all part of the plan I love New York I'm like I've been waiting for this actually my whole life and I'm actually happy that I'm older now I can really experience and I'm mature enough like I don't know how I'd be if I was a 21-year-old, 22-year-old in there, but now I'm 26. The biggest thing I love is just the people. It's like that New York feel, like I walk outside, no matter who you are, no matter what you do, like we're all right here together. I'm like, I love it. Like I'm the perfect time. I'm like, God always got a plan, man. Like got me there exactly when I need to be there. But yeah, I love New York. Mikel Bridges, he's on the precipice of taking that next step this is certainly the most responsibility that he's going to have over the course of his NBA career, but it's a great position to be in if you're Mikel Bridges. This next step for him is going to be really cool because he's got a big upside. He, he really does. Anyone from New York City in general, you want to see someone who's out there competing to win. You want to see someone who's out there caring about their teammates. And I don't think anyone could ever question that about Mikel. You know, you know, a good game, bad game, he's gonna give you the effort. And when you see a guy so locked in and you know where his heart is, you, you can deal with anything. He's worked on this stuff every single day, nonstop. And he's been able to take those steps and then apply them on the court. But there's a mental aspect of it too, just understanding, you know, this is the way that you're gonna play and, and execute it. And, you know, it takes a lot of guts to step up and play like that. And, um, you know, he's really proven that he's a, really a top player in this league on both ends of the floor. One on one with Lopez, the for Bridges! It's extremely tough to be a two-way player in this league and be asked to produce on the offensive end and have the responsibility on the defensive end. There's a select few in this league who ultimately at the end of the night really do it on a consistent basis. It's really extremely hard to do. So I'm pleased that he's taking on that role. I think he's going to grow into it. It's a heck of a challenge for him, but I think he's accepting that challenge. Even if Mikhail was not my son, I would have a hell of a lot of respect for that kid. He gets it. He's a team guy, you know? That's what I love about him is that he will do whatever it takes to win. I respect that about him. Okay, this team needs me to do this all the time, so that's what I'm going to do. This team needs it. It's Mikhail, and he's capable, and he's always been ready for this. I don't think there's a ceiling. He's a nasty competitor, and anytime you have a guy like that that you know is so selfless and he doesn't care who gets the credit, I would never put a cap on what he could do. Tough delivery, Mikhail Bridges off the heel. Oh, what a board! Where did he come from? Mikhail Bridges is not human. I don't know, man. Just the next step. That's what it really is. Um, it's a new role, and personally, I think I can fulfill it and succeed in it, just who I am as a person. And I think it's just that time where you just keep growing as a person and a player, and then who wouldn't want this type of, you want to say pressure, like, you know, these type of expectations. Like, you know, if you really love a game and you really want to be the best you can be as a player, you would want this type of feel where, like, okay, everything's on your shoulders. Like, what are you going to do? how I'm raised and where I came from. A lot of things I've been through, I just feel like I'm ready for the moment and kind of always been.